turning some gardening gloves and foam into these Lord of the Ring inspired gauntlets. The template I'm using today was found on punishprops.com. There are a lot of small pieces for this build, so being organized really paid off in the long run. I started by tracing my finger pieces onto a two millimeter foam board, and then I moved on to doing the arm pieces on a four millimeter foam board. Once I had all of my finger pieces cut, I began heat shaping them on a curling iron. After all 78 finger pieces were cut and shaped, I began painting them individually, careful to get all of the edges, so that way I didn't have to worry about gaps in my paint job once I started assembling. But before I can start assembling, I have to do my score and fold lines. For these pieces, I'm using my Dremel to sand down the score lines, and then I'm using super glue to stick it back together. Once the super glue dries, you'll have rigid pieces that resemble metal. For the next step, I'm organizing all of my finger armor pieces so I can begin assembly. Using a thin strip of leather, I begin by measuring my finger length and divide that by how many holes I need for each rivet. I then use those measurements to figure out where my rivet holes belong on the piece of leather. And once I have my measurements ready, I use my rivet hole punch to punch the holes through the leather. I'll then cut any excess leather off of the strip so it's not bulky underneath my finger armor pieces. For assembly, I'm applying a thin coat of contact cement before I'm using the rivet, so that way I can ensure I don't lose any pieces of my prop when I'm using it. At this point, it's important to make sure all of your armor pieces are going on straight because there's no way of correcting them once the rivet's on. And when you've finished all 10 fingers, you can then connect the leather strips with a contact cement to your glove. And now that I have my glove put together, I can begin working on the hand and arm parts. For these, I'm gonna be using the same score and fold method that I used for those finger pieces. Using the template as a guide, I'm marking where the score lines fall. And then I grab a sharper X-Acto knife to score a shallow V cut into the foam. Once I have those score lines in place, I use my Dremel tool to clean it up. And lastly, I use a little bit of contact cement to hold those folds in place. Once the contact cement dries, you'll have a shape that holds its curve. For my paint job, I'm doing a wash in a medium bodied Mars black. For my high spots, I'm doing an iridescent rich silver and to simulate rust, a raw sienna. While I'm painting, I'm mindful to make sure I get all of the visible parts of my armor. That includes the sides. While I'm waiting for my paint to dry, I'm taking a 15 millimeter round dowel and sanding it down with my Dremel to create a spike. I then cut the tip of the spike off and I'll use that for the center of my gauntlets. Now that the paint is dry, I can begin assembling the gauntlet. To connect all of the pieces together, I use Chicago screws. This gives me some flexibility while wearing them. And when all of those pieces are put together, I use a rivet to connect that fake hinge to the thumb piece and then a Chicago screw to connect it to the glove. I don't wanna use a contact cement over the whole glove because it'll lose its flexibility. So I'm using a leather sash over the hand part and then I'm using an elastic over the wrist to hold it all together. I've measured those pieces to my arm and then I connect them using the Chicago screws that are already there. Now that it's all assembled, I'm using some super glue to apply the final embellishments to the knuckles and that spike that we made for the gauntlet. For my last and final step, I'm using a dry brush and applying the iridescent rich silver and a light dust over the high spots to give it that metallic finish. And the end result is the Witch King of Angmar's gauntlets. See you next time!